So what you do here is actually um, you have initial values, right? So initializing things, and uh, then you process something here, right? And this process, whatever you do here, is the one usually uh, dealing with the equations, right? So these are the equations. It says the growth is equal to growth rate multiplied by the population. And uh, so in other words, this line right here is the one we learned uh, dp by dt is equal to rate multiplied by the population. So it's the same equation right here, right? And uh, the, then I said the population is equal to uh, nothing but the population, initial population plus uh, the growth multiplied by delta T. So in that case, uh, usually you just multiply this by delta T will give you this, right? So you calculate the growth here and then put the growth and multiply by the delta T. In this case, it's a one hour if you uh, recall the problem and that will give you the, the, the value here, right? And then you do this uh, for some time, like 24 hours or whatever. So this is a full loop, it's a looping it. So you keep doing it uh, on and on. And you calculate the data, uh, the final values, and then you draw a graph out of it, right? So then uh, you have a T here, you have some values, you get the population, right, P, and then you go draw a graph. So this is the process. This whole thing right here uh, is the one which is uh, doing inside this box. This is the part you usually give you as the input. Right. Um, the last part right here, I'm sorry. Uh, the last part right here is the one which is actually giving you as the output. So uh, that is the process, that is the algorithm. You can simplify this algorithm, optimizing algorithm. Why is it important to optimize something? Well, if you optimize something, uh, it will do faster, right? So uh, you can see uh, there are two steps here, right? Let me clear this out. So there are two steps here, this growth and then the growth here again. I can cut this growth thing off if I want, and then put uh, growth rate multiplied by population here instead of a growth, right? So in that case, I can cut down more uh, on this. So I think that is what I'm doing here, right? Um, yeah, I'm showing you that. So the growth is, a, uh, growth is nothing but the growth rate per step multiplied by the population. So um, replacing the growth in this equation right here with uh, this equation, right? Uh, so what is the growth is, right? Growth is growth rate multiplied by this. And growth rate per step is nothing but this. So uh, simply what I'm doing is, my goal is get rid of this growth thing. Get rid of this one. So how do I do that is simply I'm just calculating something called growth rate per step. Growth rate per step is a growth rate, which is the R value. Um, R value multiplied by uh, delta T. So in that case, you get that. And so that's what the growth is, okay. And then, uh, I'm just skimming it through. I don't want you to put your head deep into a confusion on here. All right. So, but anyway, if you are math, if you're com uh, comfortable with it, you can pay attention and uh, understand this. Uh, so the growth is nothing but you get the growth per step multiplied by delta T, which is I just came up with here. All right. And, uh, you multiply that, uh, so this is the growth rate replaced by that step, right? So what I'm saying here is, let's call this GRS, this is what it is, is equal to uh, R, which is the growth rate, right? Growth rate multiplied by delta T, so that's what it is. 
So then that means uh, growth rate is equal to TRS divided by delta T. Why? You can multiply both sides by one over delta T. This side also one over delta T. This, this cancel out and this remains, right? So that is, uh, that is what uh, showing here. So this is the growth rate. This is the growth rate I replaced by this. Okay, so this is what right here you have. Right. And then it says a population. This is another equation, not here. So the population equal population plus the change in population. So this is what the change in population is look like now. Uh, I uh, this is this part right here. This part right here is nothing but uh, uh, this one multiplied by this is nothing but the growth. So uh, if I go back again, population population is equal to all population old population plus change in population, right? Change in population I have written as, uh, so uh, change in population I have written as growth multiplied by delta T. Now I have uh, the, instead of growth here, I'm going to replace that by this whole thing. So in that case, I will have all pop, plus uh, to whatever I came up here, right? So that's the whole thing here. This is the equation for that, right? So it's that. And then, uh, so that means at the end, I get something look like this, right? Why? Uh, delta T to delta T cancel out. And then I get something look like this. So this is equal population is equal to all population plus uh, growth per step multiply by population. You may can take the population out, so it will be one plus something, right? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, if you're a math, uh, you can have an idea what I'm talking about. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Um, so this is what you come up with. Population is equal to population plus growth rate per step multiplied by population, right? So instead of having uh, two lines here, calculating growth and applying growth. In this program, I have one line. So it's reduced the number of equations. So that's what it is. How I came up with this line is what I'm showing here, right? So if you don't understand it, if you confuse it, don't worry about it. But if you can understand, uh, you're good, okay? Good to go, all right? All right, so that is that. Uh, so uh, now keep, it, keep that aside. So we know how to calculate those things. So that is the way the system calculate it for give you. Now, this is here. What I'm going to show you is another solution. So this is another solution. So in this solution, uh, we have dp by dt is equal to rp. Then uh, we came up with this. This is the previous things that we talked about already. 0 0.10 P, that's what we, we came up with, okay? That's the initial population, but the rate of change is equal to whatever the growth, right? And uh, using this equation in calculus, if you learn calculus, if you are a math wizard or somebody related to math, you have another way of showing this. Uh, this will end up with this equation right here. And what is this E here? There's a weird symbol, V, E. Well, I don't know what this E is. Uh, so that is, that will confuse a lot of people. Uh, so we'll analyze what is this E is, okay? So that's what we're gonna do for the rest of this lecture. What is E actually, this E thing? And, uh, yeah, so this will give you the same answer as what we do here. So this this is the the computer how you calculate it. 
this is how the math people calculate it. Okay, so uh, so I'm showing you how how the math is working on it and how you're making it out. Why? Because uh, we have a lot of applications using this kind of equation, uh, especially when it comes to uh, even a drug dosage or calculate actually uh, the bone of a mummy, um, the days and the times of a fossil a piece that you collect or anything like that. Uh, there are some ways uh, that uh, these equations appear in many books out there. Right, so because of that, I like to teach you that. Uh, so for your understanding, so only thing that makes you really confused is what is this E is. So let me talk about what is E and how I come up with this equation to this equation. So that is what our lecture today. All right. So if your monkey mind running around, uh, uh, make sure uh, you uh, you understand this because I'm going to test you this uh, again later on okay so all right so the first thing i want to teach you when it comes to this e uh what is e stand for right so uh, there's a term called irrational number does anybody know what is irrational number they have a decimal that doesn't uh, repeat it's goes on infinitely on forever yes so that is one way of looking at it or the other way i can say is it is a number that you never going to write as a divided by b. Right. You cannot write irrational number in this form. That's what it is. Okay, so that is a way of thinking. But there are numbers you can write like this. For example, uh, 22 divided by seven, right? Obviously this will be something closer to 3.14, one, five, and then some other values. Uh, this never ends. Like for example, if you divide 20 by three or six, uh, six, this never ends. Like this is 3.33333333 and so on for forever, right? But these are not irrational numbers, okay? Even it's, it's divide and it's going forever, it never stops. These are not irrational numbers. Irrational numbers, you cannot write like this, right? Even 22 over seven is a pi, it is not going to be the same number as this. It will be so close to this, but it is not this. So the pi is not this, okay? Uh, so the pi is a irrational number. Even you using this fraction to just saying, okay, pi is this, but it is not reality. In reality, it's a little different, but this is a very close number for the pi. So that's why sometimes you may have seen pi as 22 over seven, especially when you're doing a practical thing. So this is something that they, they put it out there. But in reality, it is not pi, but it is close to pi. Okay, keep that in mind. Right, uh, so these are the irrational numbers out there. One of them are called or Euler number or Euler number or Euler number, that's what I, I pronounce it, right? So this number is this, 2.7128 and so on and it never ends, it goes forever. This number you cannot write as a one fraction, which is A over B, you cannot write it like this, okay? Or a pi, you cannot write like this. Pi, uh, pi E, you cannot write like this. Or uh, uh, some some things like square root three you cannot write like that. So that's something like those those things you cannot. So these are called irrational numbers. One interesting one is this one. Uh, let me talk about it a minute uh, because it's very interesting. Uh, have you seen Mona Lisa? The picture. What is this? Mona Lisa? What is the special about Mona Lisa? Uh, does anybody know? Golden triangle, I think it's called. It's Mona Lisa. This is a Mona Lisa, okay? Uh, this is a picture of Mona Lisa. And uh, uh, if you, 
uh, if you know about the Mona Lisa, the picture, which is, I think it's Da Vinci uh, draw this. Uh, one special thing in that Mona Lisa's picture, when, whatever the angle you're looking at her, uh, she's smiling, that's what they're saying, okay? Uh, so which angle, whatever, it's like she's looking at you and smile. And, and there's a attraction to this. Even in Apple logo, or there's certain things in out there which you really get attracted and you remember, okay? Those are having this uh, proportionality, which is called the golden triangle, right? Uh, so this pro proportionality is pretty interesting. Uh, there's a really good connection with the human and this connection. So uh, if you have a pattern out there, which is related to this golden uh, ratio, we call it actually not the triangle, it's a ratio. If you have this ratio calculated and then you set it up pictures with it, um, that is very important uh, factor, which is out there, uh, that uh, you get really attracted. The human get attracted to golden ratio, as it says, right? So you may have seen pictures with the golden ratio in it. If you have seen those, uh, uh, these are a few examples. I should have right golden ratio instead of this. Um, ratio, okay. So this is the golden ratio. If you draw something uh, which is related to that, uh, those things will be pretty nice and you will uh, feel like it is something closer to you, especially the Apple logo is also like that. This so Apple logo is designed using a golden ratio. You see the, the Apple logo is pretty neat when you're looking at it. Uh, so if you are an artist, and if you think uh, you want to design a logo which is much more uh, closer to attractive to people and if it is, uh, you want it to stuck in human brain, think about golden ratio and study about it. It's pretty uh, good idea. Um, uh, it's pretty interesting as well. Uh, it is out there, right? Um, so that is one thing that I want to point out here is uh, this, um, you still can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, seems like it's all frozen for a minute. Okay, uh, so this is one thing. Uh, I think uh, I had to wait a little, it's, it's froze a little. Um, give me a second. Right, okay, so I'm coming back. All right, it took, uh, my, my machine got, uh, wrong turn, right? So these are uh, also the ratio. Uh, this is pretty interesting uh, things that are there. Uh, so one of them is golden ratio. That is related to uh, also uh, the irrational numbers, which you call golden ratio. So, so I want to point out that ratio is 1.6 something. So this is the value. Um, yeah, so if you never studied of it, read about it, it's pretty nice. Um, Fascinating things. Okay, so let's move on uh, to Euler number here. Uh, so this Euler number, which is E, is represented uh, by this equation right here. So you can see it's a combination of numbers together. So a combination of uh, fractions together. So this is the reason you cannot write this as a one fraction. So it is a set of fractions that we need here. All right, I want to point out one thing here. What is this? What is this symbol? This. What is this in math or any uh, science? What is this represents? Factorial. Factorial. So what is factorial means? If I say refactorial, so this means uh, you get uh, three multiplied by two multiplied by one. So this is what this equals to. Right. If you have a seven, obviously factorial means seven multiplied by six multiplied by five multiplied by four multiplied by three multiplied by two multiplied by one. So like that, whatever the number, you just multiply it downwards. And then what is the value here is this, All right? This is this, All right? So whatever the value you get, you divide by one and you add all together, you end up with some value like this, right? And this is equivalent to E, okay? All right, so that is the relationship between E and 
the real numbers that you know, okay? So instead of writing like this, you just say, okay, it's an E, right? So when you, when you just give a symbol to this, that symbol is E. So don't worry or get scared if you see E. E is nothing but this value, right? So it has a limit. So for example, uh, depend the ac accuracy is depend on how, how far you're writing this. So simply you can take this as a value, right? Or 2.718, two as a value. So your accuracy is depending on how many numbers you take after this dot, okay? Right. Uh, calculator gets some sub, some substantial amount of dots. Uh, I mean the digits here, somewhere here maybe. Right. So that will be uh, the value we're using for the calculator when you have the e values. Okay. Right. So that is the Euler number, and this is how we calculate it and using it. Okay. So one more thing I would like to teach you is the logarithm. So if you never heard of this, uh, let me teach you that. Right, um, we know everything about two to the power two is four. So the powers are pretty easy, right? Uh, you have three to the power two is nine. Of course, I know those things, right? Uh, five to the power two is 25. So what does this mean? This means uh, if you have power means you just multiply the same number a number of times. So three multiplied by two here. So five multiplied by five here, like that, right? Okay, so these are powers. These are powers, right? Okay. So there's a other way of round. Uh, like for example, uh, what is 25 if somebody asks, right? And uh, if it is base 10, what is, a, what is 25? So how do I reverse this and write it in the reverse order? So that is what the log is about, writing something a reverse order, right? So the reverse order. You know, writing on the reverse order. So usually, uh, when you're having a logarithm, like for example, if it is thousand here, right? Thousand is nothing but ten to the power three, right? So if you want to write this in a logarithm, you say uh, you can say logarithm, right? So this is base ten values, right? And three is equal thousand. That's how you write it, okay? So, uh, well, uh, how do I, how do I uh, make sure this is what it is? Well, this one is going as uh, the beak of a bird, like for example, um, uh, the best way to write this is, uh, I would say 10 to the power three, is equal to thousand, right? So this is ten to the power three. So you either you write like this, or you can say, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, this is not this is not the way I should write it. I made a mistake here. So uh, let me see. Best way to write this is, uh, I would say, log, right? thousand is three yeah so like that I can write so that means uh, uh, the log value of thousand is three means if I have ten to the power here uh, ten to the power three is thousand so it sees a beak of a bird like this okay so what I say is base ten to the power three is equal thousand so it's a bird beak like this right so this is a one way of thinking of it. Or the other way of thinking of it is log 10, thousand equal three is a Tyson. So the Tyson has a string and he's, uh, has a string and then he just swing himself, right? So those are two ways of thinking of this. Base to the power to the value. Base to the power to the value. So log means, Log any number here means is base to the power to the number, right? Third big, thousand, either one. You can remember this, right? So that's how you 
define the log. So whatever the value here means, the whatever the value here means, the base to the power to get this number. Base to the power to get this number. That's what it is, okay? So for example, what is log 100 is equal to? Anyone? Yeah? Two? Two, this is two right here, right? Why? 10 to the power two is 100, okay? So like that, so remember this. So it is depending on the base actually. So we are talking about 10 to, 10 to the base because all the numbers we know, even any number that you write, right? This is base 10. What do you mean by base 10? We have numbers from zero to nine. We're using 10 digits numbers to represent this. So what is this means in actually 10 to the power zero, 10 to the power one, 10 to the power two and 10 to the power three order. To make this 2,500, right? We're using a base 10 to the powers. So for example, if I want to make this 2,500, I usually do is uh, uh, using uh, this, this means actually 10 to the power two means, uh, uh, 10 to the power three means thousand, right? Okay. So if you thousand multiply by two, we'll give you 2000, right? And then here it says 10 to the power two, which is a hundred, right? 10 to the power two is hundred. And then you multiply that by five, it'll give you 500. This is 10 to the power one, which is 10, multiplied by zero is always zero. 10 to the power zero is one, multiplied by zero is always zero. If you add all together, right, you get zero, zero, five, and two, 2,500, all right? So that's how uh, our numbers were designed, right? So that is a base 10. So that's why I know base 10, if you take two to the power three, two to the power, 10 to the power two is 100. Right, to refresh you one more time, let me ask you a few questions on this. What is a log? Uh, let's say 10,000 is equal to. Anyone? Would that be four? Four, yes, that's four. Good. So you get the idea, right? Number of zeros is equal to that number. Right, so uh, so the log we know already, right? So it's good. Uh, log means actually base 10. But uh, there is such a thing, instead of I'm um, using a base 10, I can use base E. That is interesting, to have the base E values. So, Instead of I'm using uh, the log, I change this log name to ln, just to say that I'm not using log 10 anymore. Instead of this, I'm using a log e. So instead of I'm writing is log e, I just write ln. Okay, so if you see ln somewhere, right? If you see ln anywhere, okay? That means you're using log e, okay? Log e. Okay, so these two are equal, right? That's all you need to know. Don't worry about anything else. Um, just ln means log e. Keep that in mind. If you don't understand anything I teach you, right? If I know you're not a math major or a physics major for a reason. Uh, that is your own interest and your dislike in physics and math. So, so. That is the common sense. But in this class, at, uh, unfortunately, you had to learn those even you don't like it. Why? Because this is a bridge class. And what I'm doing is uh, combining your major, whatever it is, right, to the computer science, right? Uh, so computer science is a combination of physics, math, and all that. So when you do the calculations, you need physics, math, and things like that. So this, in this bridge course, um, you have to have basic knowledge of those things to match your 
expertise into our expertise. So that's, this is the bridge that I'm building right now, okay? So uh, in order to talk about uh, terms in computers and stuff, you have to have a little knowledge of this. So that's why I'm teaching this, okay? Uh, not to punish you or scare you. So uh, make sure you have a general knowledge of this. That's why I'm just going really basic and try to help you out on this, okay? So if you have questions on this, please ask because of this very reason. Uh, all right, so there's a property on uh, this ln thing. Uh, so one is ln uh, to the power e x is nothing but x. That is a good thing. Uh, and also we know e to the power ln x, right, is equal to x. Right. So those are the two things that you have to know. Uh, you don't have to know this here. Know this as a fact. So we use this idea in order to nail this problem. Okay. So let me go through this uh, slide one more time. Uh, I mean, one more time. In the first time, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, keep an asterisk on this slide because I'm going to test, test you on this. Uh, if you don't understand any of these steps, that's okay, just uh, memorize it, right? Uh, but uh, you've got to know this, okay? So, so the first equation we have is uh, dp by dt is equal to 0 0.10p. We already know this, right? And uh, so in the calculus, what they do is they write this in this order, okay? So how in the world I did that? Well, I multiply both sides by dt. Multiply both sides by dt. And then this to this cancel out. So this equation comes here, right? So this is the equation that we are handling in this case. So as you remember, this is nothing but a little piece of, we just divide whole our, uh, we, we did it in the review, right? We just make these things very small. And we call this a very small piece as a dt or the delta t. So that's what this delta t means, right? So in order to make sure that the total number of space that you travel is nothing but add all together, right? We talk about this in calculus. So in order to do that, that means we can add this whole thing. This is the symbol we use to add, right? From this step to this step is the calculus that you have no clue how to get, unless you do calculus in your high school or somewhere. So because of that, just know when you calculate this one, using a calculus techniques, you get the answer look like this. You get ln p is equal to 0 0.10 t plus c. C is a constant, okay? All right, so how do I get from here to here? Don't worry about it. Just uh, if you know calculus, you know. Otherwise, just know this. You come from here to here, right? So what you had to remember, you had to remember is doing a calculus integral will result this answer. Okay, remember that. That's all. And then uh, using uh, this concept right here about the e part, we power this up by e. So in that case, I can write e to the power ln p is equal to e to the power 0 0.10 t plus e to the power c, right? This is something in math, if you have learned 2 to the power 2 plus 2 to the power 2 is nothing but 2 to the power 4, right? You just add these two, multiply these two together. Right. So if you have addition like this, this is a math concept. Uh, if you know any power like 3 to the power 2 plus 3 to the power 1 is equal to 3 to the power 2, um, uh, 3 to the power 3, yes. Um, you add these two together, right? So, um, so this is a concept um, that uh, you will learn later on, right? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this is 3 to the power 2 multiplied by 3 to the power 1. Yes, this is what it is. Right, uh, so this concept, whatever is this one, is we can use and write it this one as e to the power 0 0.10t, right, multiplied by ec instead of that. 
okay? Uh, and then this is E L N B. Right. So uh, okay. So I'll stop here and uh, talk about this again because I know uh, I run out of time.